Uh, and we're going to move into women in uh, Islam. And our first speaker today is Ms. I hope I get this right. Asma Abdelladi. Abdelladi. Miss uh, Abdelladi is a senior student at Southern Connecticut State University with a major in public health. She is the co-director of Moss Connecticut and an active member of the New Haven Islam Center community. And I have to say, this is the first time in 10 years I've been presenting uh, through our hate and bias cultural awareness that we ever had a woman come. So I'm look, really looking forward to this session, and thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for having me today. Uh, when I was told to come in and talk about our experiences here as uh, Muslim women, I was very excited because this opportunity doesn't come around that often. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the things that we go through as Muslim women, and at the end, if you guys have any questions, feel free. Um, <clears throat> I am a little nervous. So. <laughs> uh, what comes to your mind when you think of a Muslim woman? A mysterious, veiled victim of male oppression awaiting Western liberation? A slogan shouting terrorist? An uneducated foreigner with whom you have little or nothing in common? Unless your social circle includes Muslim friends and acquaintances, the chances are that your social, uh, your impressions of Muslim women have largely been formed by negative media stereotypes. Images that usually have little to do with real life. And they may have been designed to attract more viewers, sell more products, or gain support for someone's political agenda. How much do you really know about Muslim women's lives or views, and why does it matter? Well, for one thing, Muslims account for 20 to 25 percent of the people on this planet. And Islam has become the second main religion uh, in Europe, believe it or not. But did you know that the majority of European and American converts to Islam are women, not men? Would it surprise you to learn that many women in the Muslim world feel sorry for Western women and view them as being victimized? Have you ever stopped to consider why Muslim women who immigrate to the West usually maintain their identity and strive to pass it on to their children? A thinking person may well ask, if Islam is as oppressive to women as some journalists would have us believe, why aren't Muslim women running away in droves? What is it about Islam that attracts any followers out of its heart? Muslim women who have been prohibited from wearing their headscarves, which we call the hijab, um, in a number of contexts. They have been harassed, fired from jobs, denied access to public places, and otherwise discriminated against because they wear the hijab. Because of their visibility, Muslim women who wear the hijab face particular exposure to discrimination and have increasingly been targets for harassment in the aftermath of September 11. While it is difficult to obtain accurate statistics about discriminatory incidents, reported instances of discrimination appear to be on the rise. Muslim women, like pe all people in the United States, have the right to practice their religion. They also have the right to be, to be treated equally and not to be discriminated against or harassed because of their religion, their gender, or perceptions about their nationality or ethnicity. Numerous sources of law protect these rights. These rights protect Muslim women to practice equally in society, whether at work, at school, at the DMV, in the criminal justice system, or in pub other public places. At work, Muslim women have been denied the right to wear a headscarf, while working as police officers and in their and other occupations. Women have also been fired for refusing to remove their headscarves. Um, I personally know a lot of people that uh, had a lot of problems getting jobs because they wear the headscarves. Um, when I apply for jobs and I go for job interviews, I'm always asked, "Do you mind? would you mind taking that off and just wearing a hat instead? And my answer is always no. Even, no matter how good the job is, if I am not going to be respected for who I am and accepted for who I am, then I will pass. Um, at school, Muslim girls who wear their headscarves have been harassed and assaulted. Students also have been denied the right to wear hijab to school and have been prevented from participating in extracurricular activities, including musical concerts and athletic events. Um, I personally had a lot of, a lot of experiences. Um, <coughs> As a Muslim uh, woman here, I grew up my I grew up here my whole life, and so um, I started wearing my hijab when I was 
say around like middle school uh, because I wanted to. My parents actually told me to wait a while and not wear it because I was still young and stuff like that. But I was actually really excited to, to try it on and go for the experience. Um, my latest, uh, biggest experience had to be uh, when I first started college. Um, I, my math professor was Jewish. And my, it was my first semester in college. And from the beginning of the semester, I could just tell that the professor hated me. For some reason, I mean, you grew up here our whole lives, and you know, and you get vibes, and you can tell when someone likes you or they don't. You see the looks in people's eyes, and you know whether that person accepts you or not. Um, it was my first semester in college, and I didn't know any better. So I thought maybe that's just how he is. He never replied to my emails. He never uh, answered my questions. Whenever I'd go up to him after class, he always had an answer things with an attitude and yeah, yeah, I'll get to it. Um, and at the end of the class, he ended up failing me. I got a straight up F. I retook all the exams we had, including my final, and I retook it with someone else, um, and I still got an F. But I didn't bother to check until the transcript came out, my uh, letter grade. And when I went to complain to the school, they said, Sorry, we can't do anything about it. Um, and it really upset me that, you know, here I am giving you evidence and telling you that I was discriminated against for who I am, and all you can tell me is, sorry, we can't do anything about it. And that's just another experience of some of the things that we have to deal with as Muslim women. Um, in law enforcement context, Muslim women have been denied the right to wear a headscarf while in jail and courthouse detention, while visiting family members in correctional institutions, while accompanying family members to court, and even while working in correctional institutions. Women also have been harassed by police officers for wearing headscarves, both when being arrested and when they have called the police for help. In public places, Muslims, Muslim women and girls have been denied the right to enter public buildings, shopping malls, and swimming pools in amusement parks unless they submit to being searched by male guards or agree to remove their head coverings and other garments that they wear for religious reasons. Uh, I personally had experiences like that, you know, going to a swimming pool, we have a, a special, a specific attire that we wear. Um, some uh, women choose to put on a swimming cap rather than keep the hijab on. I personally keep my hijab on in the water. Um, and I've been told that I can't enter the swimming pool unless I take it off. Or I can't enter the swimming pool unless I'm in a bathing suit. Um, as a Muslim woman, I would like to say that Islam has liberated me in many ways. Most Americans see women as an, Muslim women as an oppressed lot. Uh, but I would like them to know that if Muslim women are oppressed, it's because they forsake the true Islam and follow their country's cultural practices. Islam throws away all the garbage that keeps women down and lifts them up to a status of self-respect and confidence. Most American women feel that they are most liberated women on earth, but they're not really relieved from the bonds of oppression. Anyone who has to have a perfect body for fear of rejection, anyone who has to reveal their bodies to receive so-called attention, anyone who gets paid less for equal work versus a male counterpart, anyone in those categories is still oppressed. And the only solution is to throw the chains of bondage away and accept God and Islam in their life. The one most important issue I'd like to get across, not only to the American public, but also even to many Muslims themselves, is that Islam must be judged on its own merits and not on the behavior of all Muslims. Islam is a perfect system because it was created by God, just as we were. We, however, worry are not perfect. We're not created perfect. We make mistakes. We have free will and we choose our ways of life and make our own decisions. Sometimes they're the correct decisions and sometimes they aren't. Um, also, I hope that non-Muslims will someday understand that every Muslim, true Muslim who lives by the laws of God is a fundamentalist and would understand the true meaning of that word. Regardless of the 1400 plus years that have passed since the teachings of God through the Prophet Muhammad, Islam has not changed. In fact, the laws of God have never changed since Adam was created by God. God is not creating different humans than he did before. We are all human beings created by God. When we're born, we have the same needs for love, affection, 
food, protection, the same need to worship a higher being. These needs change as we mature and become rapid, rapidly shaped by our environment, but they remain essential human needs. Change, however, never starts with countries or leaders. It starts in the home, with the children, where the women rule. As soon as Muslim women of the world realize this, the changes for the better will begin. I want to conclude it with um, one of the latest things that happened to me was uh, I was going to a, we were invited over to go to a party at someone's house. And I was driving with my family in the car and as I took a right turn, uh, someone, a guy and his girlfriend or his wife in a pickup truck felt that it was funny to uh, swerve his car towards me. Um, and if I hadn't noticed and swerved my car over the curb, we would have crashed. Um, now that's a guy that thinks it's funny to put someone's life in danger. He put me in danger, he put my, uh, my family in danger because he thinks it's funny. They started laughing and they drove off. Um, I know people who were simply pulled over for whatever reason and ended up just getting arrested for no reason but because they were Muslim. Um, I know uh, a woman who was arrested when she got over, pulled over by the cop because she wore the niqab or the burqa or whatever people call it is when you cover your face and you can only see your eyes. Um, I want to feel safe. Uh, and how can I feel safe when the people that are supposed to be protecting me are the, are the ones harming me? Now, I, I tend not to generalize because I've been there and I've been put in that position all the time on the news, Muslims are this, Muslims are that, Muslims are terrorists. You see it everywhere uh, on the news in real life, what, whatever you're dealing with, you hear it all the time. And because I've been there and I've been put through that, I don't like generalizing and I don't like saying, all cops are bad or all you know, people are this or all people are that. Um, I don't want to walk the streets feeling rejected. I don't want to walk the streets with looks of hatred in people's eyes. I don't want to walk the streets and go places trying extra hard to please everyone. And that's another burden that we have is because you hear all these things on the media all the time. I always have to feel like I always have to smile to everyone. I always have to be nice. Even if I'm having a bad day, I always have to watch my language. I always have to watch what I'm saying, what I'm doing. Because I don't want it to be misinterpreted. And then at the end of the day, people say, well, oh, look at what all Muslims do. Look at what all... Um, Muslim girls do. Um, and I don't want to feel like I have to do that all the time. Um, I don't feel safe anymore, especially after the Chapel Hill shooting, which um, you kind of talked about. Uh, I don't feel safe in public places. I feel like if I piss someone off, they might just pull a gun and shoot me because I'm Muslim. So it's, it's hard. Uh, I don't want to be afraid when I call the cop and ask for help. I don't want to feel like I will be rejected. Um, and I want to, I, I grew up here and I go to school, I work, I give it all I have and at the end of the day I want to feel like I'm part of this uh, country. I'm, I'm accepted for who I am. Uh, because I wear the scarf it doesn't make me different than anyone else who doesn't. Um, because I am a Muslim doesn't make me different than anyone else who isn't. And me feeling safe starts with you guys. So I hope that contributed a little bit to um, helping you guys understand the things that we need to do. Yeah. How's your experience been on Camp University campus with uh, public safety? Uh, I'm actually not, a, I, this is my first time actually being here. But <laughs> it's good so far. I mean, I'm in a classroom full of cops, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Can I ask you something? Yeah. What would be your advice to law enforcement officers when they interact with Muslim families, including sisters like you, when they have to do whatever, search for their car, when they have to deal with them personally, when they have to get into their homes? What do you need to keep in mind? to respect the tradition, what do you need to know? Um, I always tell my friends that, uh, or just Muslim, like people I know in general, that 
if you don't know your rights here, you're kind of doomed, basically. Because um, a lot of times they're being taken advantage of. And so if you ever pull someone over or you have to go into someone's home, just remember that before anything, they're human beings. Whether they made a mistake or whatever it is. Uh, Muslim women um, usually, you know, no touching um, unless, you know, like if I'm in an airport or something and I have to be frisked, I usually ask for, or I'm speaking on behalf of all of us probably, we ask for a woman because um, we cover up for a reason and Mason will talk about that more in her um, discussion. But just remember that a lot of times they don't understand. You know, you deal with people all the time that don't speak the language, and they need you to, to clarify. They need, they need to feel safe. So if you make them feel safe, they're going to cooperate 100% with you. If they don't feel threatened, you know, a lot of times um, I see, you know, I, I was in a cafe, and there was a table filled with cops just having um, coffee and stuff. And as soon as me and my friend walked in, all they did was just stare. They just kept staring. And it was very uncomfortable. And I felt like if something had happened to me at that moment, I would not feel comfortable going up to them because it wasn't just a regular stare. It was a hate stare, as we call it, you know? And if you talk to any Muslim woman especially, they can tell, the, they can tell you how they know the difference between it. Just someone looking at you because they're curious and someone just looking at you because they really just don't like you. And so making them feel safe is the best thing that you can do. Just explain to them that, you know, I'm, I'm not here to harm you. I understand that, you know, cultural differences in religion. And the moment that you do that, you're making everything just so much easier for you and for them. Let me just interesting real quick. Um, there are times where a police officer would come to your home and you know, we would knock on the door. If there's a male available, uh, obviously we'll talk to the male if we could. But there, we, there will be times where we may have to talk to the female. Mm. And again, we know that it's better to go through the male, um, or the, the head of the family, or you know, the, the male. Um, the other thing is too, when, when we book uh, a woman, we're gonna ask that you take off your job. Mm -hmm. um, and that's standard for all women and everything on you would have to come off. Not your clothes, uh, I'm talking about your jewelry, um, everything else. That's standard for all women. And so I think it, it's, this is like a two-way street in, in sort of like a respect, uh, certain respects is that the police officer, we have our policy that we have to uh, abide by, by uh, our city, town, uh, government, uh, state policy. So it's not that we're coming after you specifically. All right, well, this is for all women. And um, so at times it's gonna be very uncomfortable uncomfortable um, because of your culture, but it's the way that the American custom is. The other thing is, if we have a female officer available, she could come out and um, check you, search you, whatever the problem. Uh, if we don't have a female available, there are gonna be times where a male is gonna have to, and, and there are certain ways that we do that with our hands. Uh, cup the other way just to make sure there are no weapons so th those are some things that may continue to keep you uncomfortable but they are for all women across the board we don't discriminate um, as far as like oh she's a Muslim woman or she's a Catholic or a Jewish woman so just keep that in the back of your mind but on the other side when you do um, there are those like in any field that may go over and beyond and, and do things that they're not supposed to do and, and there's a process there's a system that you can um, report that through. So you should never feel that you're threatened, harassed by the police, by the very people that are there to protect all people, and that's what we're here for. There's no reason for you to feel other than what you are, a Muslim woman, and not feel degraded by any officer, especially officer, because we're over, we're supposed to be beyond, and that's the way we do our, our job. I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Right, thank you. Thank you.